Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna and this is Blogtober number seven. Sorry, um, you think I could keep track of a few numbers, but today is October 7th, 2018. Thank you so much for coming back to watch. Um, if this is your first time visiting, thanks for stopping in. This is a short little vlog about um, a children's literature book for the season and uh, a little craft. So um, today's book is called A is for Autumn, and it's by Robert Mass. Now, I'm not sure when a name is spelled M-A-A-S, if it's pronounced that way, and so I apologize if that's wrong. But this is a charming book. It's full of photographs, and who doesn't like a good A to Z book? And of, A is, of course, for Autumn and Apples, the apple picking season here in Virginia. And um, it goes through showing all sorts of things. I particularly liked the M page, and is, M is for Monarch. And if I remember, I'll tell you a little Monarch story at the very, very end. So this is a great book for Autumn because it goes through so many different things. Um, it shows a variety of photographs for each of the letters, and it would give um, a great place to talk about different things and share your own experiences. For instance, F is for frost. So you might live someplace that in autumn you don't see frost, so that might be something to talk about, um, that the w different weather and climate changes experienced in different places. So I think it's a great book for opening discussion about the season. Um, I think that this book can be shared for very young children because um, you know, it's just a short little um, thing and you really wouldn't have to go into all of the verbiage if you had a really young child, just enjoy the photographs. Um, all the way up to maybe um, second um, or third grade would enjoy this book, A is for Autumn. And um, so today I have a craft for you. And I'll tell you, it started as a Pinterest fail. I saw this project on Pinterest and I thought, oh, how cute, it looks so easy, and um, didn't turn out to be quite so much, but I persevered because I really thought this has to be possible to be accomplished, and so um, I did come up with something that I'm happy with, uh, maybe not as beautiful as the Pinterest photo. So let me start off by telling you, showing you one of my fails and I had many I was doing several at a time these are little mason jars that you're supposed to use Mod Podge to attach either real leaves or silk leaves at this particular time where I am I don't have my maples haven't changed color the oaks um, nothing's really changed except some tiny little leaves and my cherries have all dropped their leaves but those aren't particularly attractive leaves either so um, it did say silk might be easier so I um, purchased some silk leaves and they had a variety of colors. And as you can see, they have a bumpy texture to them. They did not have the little plastic spine. And I thought, okay, well that's easier. Won't have to take the little spine off. So I bought these silk leaves um, at Michael's. And this one doesn't look as bumpy. That's because I have steam ironed this one. Um, to within an inch of its life several times and uh, it still keeps its little shape there not as pronounced as the ones that haven't been ironed but still um, was hard to get that off and that was a problem um, you can't even know how many coats of Mod Podge I've tried and I've held them down and they just pop right back up so um, the other thing I wasn't happy with is this bubbly texture of the Mod Podge up here, which even still looks cloudy in some spaces. Well, I followed the recommended directions, which were to um, use a sponge brush. And I had lots of sponge brushes, and so I tried that, and I'm definite, that was definitely a don't do for me. Um, I ended up using a brush, which is what I normally use, and that worked much better, fewer bubbles. So what I learned from doing this, oh, and, but let me tell you, this fail can be peeled off. I peeled these off of three of the jars and it just peels off. Um, and so your jar is just fine afterwards. So you can try again. You, the leaves are destroyed, but um, if you can reuse the jar. So um, I wasn't totally disappointed. So how did I ultimately succeed more or less. Um, 
first of all, I, I had a, an old sprig of, it was like one of those almost garland length of leaves. And I thought, well, let me try these instead. So they start off with this um, plastic um, spiny piece on the back. And I peeled that off, which is pretty easy. But then you'll see there's still this bumpy texture. So I did the same thing. I steam ironed them. I did use a pressing cloth because some of the ink comes off when you do this. So if you're doing it on your ironing board, you definitely want something underneath it. Um, I did them on the back side, and that is fairly flat. You do see some lines there, but it's really pretty flat. And this helped a lot. So um, I steam ironed them. The next problem was they said use a thin coat of Mod Podge and then wait till it's tacky. Well, my definition of thin and the person giving the directions is probably different. I put it very thin. That didn't work. I did put a thinnish coat. It wasn't a super heavy one, but it you actually apply them sooner than you think or sooner than I thought for sure. Um, it, the tacky is just barely tacky. Um, it, you don't need to wait a long time for that. So this is my more success and um, it is clear I don't have uh, the white spots. Occasionally I got a little bit in here that was white. And I stopped worrying that every little bit had to be attached. The leaf is attached. Um, I didn't want it popped up all over, but I've got little spots like that and I just decided that was gonna be okay. So um, I'll show you a picture here. I need it. What I did was I first took my leaves after ironing and having them prepped, put some wax paper down and brushed the back of them with a very light coat of the Mod Podge and let them start getting tacky first. Then I did the jars and then as soon as I, I learned to do it sooner than I thought it even needed to be just the slightest bit of tack to it and then started pressing leaves. And I found that if the center part got down pretty well, that was fine because you can come back later and then apply a little bit more Mod Podge underneath the parts that stick out, let it get a little tacky and then press down again. And then I put a coat over the entire um, jar and I didn't worry that there was a place where one might stick out a little bit. I don't think that's a problem. Tie a little twine across the top and then what you do is put, um, you could put a votive candle down in. I prefer not to use um, a real light but um, instead I had these little battery operated ones and um, I did, I put a set of three together and I'll put a picture here. So let me quickly go through the uh, materials that you'll need and um, I'll put a picture up here and I'm gonna look at it as I uh, talk so that I can make sure and tell you everything. You need mason jars and they should be clean. I ran my th had already run mine through the dishwasher. Um, you need the little votives or uh, battery operated flickering lights. You need some wax paper. I just put that down on my surface. Um, you need the glossy Mod Podge. I used a brush. I had some twine for the top and then my leaves. And um, you will, here's a picture of my leaves um, on the wax paper with that light coat of Mod Podge as they're starting to get tacky. And then here's a picture of uh, my jars be, as, as they're sitting starting to get tacky before you would apply the leaves. So that's today's little craft, um, uh, an almost Pinterest fail. Um, many, many hours spent trying to make it successful, but I'm ultimately pleased with three that I have. And um, I started to peel off the, uh, the ones that I just, some more that just didn't look great. And uh, my husband reminded me how much my grandson loves to peel Things. He loves to peel stickers off of things and paper off of crayons. He says, hey, save it for him. He'll love pulling that off. So um, I, I've i salvaged um, all of my mistake jars and they can be reused and uh, run through the dishwasher, of course. And um, these three can make a nice little um, lighted piece on my mantle. So um, thanks so much for stopping by today. I hope that you can make it again tomorrow. And um, for now, bye-bye.